Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about distribution of practice for learning motor skills. Um, so distribution of practice is also referred to as the spacing of practice. Um, so there are two ends of the spectrum here, massed practice and distributed practice. So massed practice is a practice schedule where the amount of rest between practice sessions or trials is very short. So there are fewer sessions. Each session is longer in duration. Um, there's a greater number of trials per session. And then between trials within the session, there's either no rest or very short rest intervals. Compared to distributed practice, that's a practice schedule where the amount of active practice um, is less per session and the rest between practice sessions or trials is relatively long. Um, so it's the same amount of practice distributed across more sessions. So the sessions themselves are shorter. Um, the practice then would span a greater length of time. So we're saying like the same amount of practice in a mass practice schedule could be three weeks and in a distributed practice could be three months. Um, so it's the same amount of practice, but spread out over a longer period of time with shorter sessions. Um, within each session, there will be a fewer number of uh, trials than compared with massed practice. Um, and then in the distributed practice, there would also be longer rest intervals between trials within the session itself. So overwhelmingly, distributed practice is supported um, in learning all kinds of motor skills. Uh, overwhelmingly, it is it's more beneficial. There's greater amount of learning that takes place. There's greater retention, greater performance across the board. Um, so like, for example, 80 hours of practice that's spread over three months results in better retention and performance than that same 80 hours of practice, but spread out over three weeks. Yeah, I just want to make sure I said that correctly. Yeah, so the same number of hours of practice spread out over a greater uh, length of time is going to be more beneficial than the same number of hours of practice crammed in in a shorter period of time. So more learning takes place that causes better attention and better performance. Um, now, interestingly, uh, when learners discuss their preferences for which type of schedule, um, learners often seem to prefer the shorter massed schedule compared to the more drawn out distributed schedule. So even though they will learn and perform better from the distributed schedule, they often don't like it as much as they like the massed schedule. Um, so it's possible that when you're designing your learning schedule, depending on what kind of environment you're in, you may want to kind of find a compromise between the two. So the mast and the distributed schedules, those are sort of the two ends of the, the spectrum. Those are the two extremes. And you can design your, your schedule anywhere along that continuum. So you may want to find a compromise where you're maximizing retention and performance, but also uh, keeping the learner from getting bored or discouraged. Uh, greater distribution is best for all sorts of types of skills like discrete and continuous skills and open and closed skills. Um, so then the question is, why is distributed practice better than massed practice? So there are a few proposed reasons. Uh, again, there's not a huge amount of research here, but this these are uh, the best hypotheses for what is taking place here. Uh, fatigue negatively influences learning in a massed practice schedule. So imagine you're practicing a skill for two hours every day. Maybe that first hour each day is very productive and a lot of learning takes place. But as you become more and more fatigued and maybe bored, uh, that second hour of practice each day might be not very productive. You might not learn as much. Um, so if you spread out practice and only practice for an hour a day, but for twice as many days, so maybe it takes two months instead of one month, but you're only getting that most productive hour each day, then you're going to learn and retain considerably more because half of your practice hours in the mast schedule would be kind of a waste of time if you're too fatigued or bored or don't, you're not getting a lot out of it. 
So you'd be getting so much more out of that second half of your hours by distributing practice a little bit more. Uh, distributed practice also increases the amount of cognitive effort that's required during practice because um, the more we practice the, the same skill within the same session, the less cognitive effort we have to exert to come up with our motor plan, problem solve, think about what we're going to do because we end up just kind of on auto repeat. We kind of just keep repeating that same skill without having to exert as much cognitive effort. Whereas if we spread out our practice over a greater number of days, then each day that we're practicing, we have to start again. Um, and so it requires more cognitive effort, which leads to better learning. And then finally, um, there's certain neurobiochemical processes that must occur to consolidate memory and store relevant information to learn a skill. So we're talking about actual neuroplasticity and the changes that are taking place in your brain physically and chemically. Um, and it takes time for those changes to happen. Um, so when we spread our practice out over a greater length of time, it gives more time and opportunity for those physical chemical changes in the brain to take place. Um, so there's more opportunity to actually consolidate the memory of how to conduct and how to perform that movement compared to if we have a shorter length of time um, where that practice is taking place. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.